Welcome, members of Curtisville Christian Church, and welcome guests. Please turn with me in Bibles to the Gospel of John, beginning in verse 48. Now, to understand and get the full impact of something that Jesus, is going to, that Jesus says in this passage, we need to back up to the book of Exodus. In Exodus 3, Exodus 3 when Moses is at the burning bush, God has called Moses to go to Egypt and say, let my people go. But when Moses hears this call, he is reluctant to go. He asks God, when, they, when I tell them that, that God has sent me, they're going to ask, what is his name? What do I tell them? God says to Moses in Exodus 3, 14, I am who I am. Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now here in John, we're in the middle of the dialogue between Jesus and the religious leaders in Jerusalem. Jesus has just declared that they do not accept his words because they are not of God. Now the leaders, they can't take pride in saying, we are the people of God. And as they give their answer to Jesus, it's more of a reactionary answer. It's a rejection of what he's saying. It's even an insult. It's not a productive response. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and you have a demon? Now Christ had gone to Samaria. And to them, that was very bad of itself. But we see that Jesus is willing to take hits to his reputation to call the outcast. Now, the second accusation, too, has already been given to others. Now they make it to Christ himself. They told others, he cast out demons by the prince of demons. Back in Matthew 12, 24, they had said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. But Jesus answered, I do not have a demon. But I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Now notice, he does not respond to being called a Samaritan. But he does respond to that second part, because the one who he does have is not a demon. The one who he does have is the Holy Spirit. And blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will be answered by God. Jesus simply contradicts what they say. He says, you dishonor me. What they have said is not a refutation of anything he said. It's just a denial. He says then, I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Christ's agenda was not one of self-promotion. Christ, although he was qualified to serve, came to serve. We'll see this theme again in, in chapter, chapter 13. He says here, most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone, anyone keeps, keeps my word, he shall never see death. Here Jesus is just rephrasing what he's already said. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But the ears of the religious elites are set to the earthly meaning of his words. And they say in verse 52, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, if anyone keeps, keeps my word, he will never see death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Now, that question, does that sound familiar? 
We've seen something like it before. Back in chapter 4, the Samaritan woman, she hears Jesus and she says, Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and the cattle and drank from it himself. Before they'd asked Jesus, Who are you? Here they're saying, Who do you make yourself out to be? Now Jesus has already t told people openly, One greater than Solomon is here. One greater than the, t the temple is here. But he does not take this opportunity to endorse himself. He answers, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Christ does not, does not endorse himself. False prophets do. If you look at Islam, you'll notice that it's built in to the very creed of Islam, the Shahada. And Muhammad is Allah's prophet. Christ does not endorse himself. He will accept the endorsement of others when they say what is true. But that is given to them, to them from heaven. After the Father's endorsement, after the Father speaks at the baptism of Christ, after he speaks of the transfiguration of Christ, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What more do you need? And yet, the Father has given us other witnesses in his word. Yet you have not known him, he says, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Jesus gives them a direct answer in three parts. First, you're lying. That's pretty simple. Second, I am not lying. And then the third part, I think is the most interesting part of his answer. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Abraham takes my side. Now, when does this happen? When does Abraham rejoice to see the day, day of Christ? He got some idea of what God would do, how some can stand, stand in to spare the guilty at Sodom and Gomorrah when he bargained with God. And God told him, I will not destroy the city for the sake of ten. But he got an even better idea later on. I wonder if after having that conversation with the other, he thought, what if I would have bargained a little bit more? I started at 50, went down to 40, went down all the way to 10, 10. What if I got, kept going? On Mount Moriah, God told Abraham to offer Isaac his son as a burnt offering. And as Isaac and Abraham are going up, up the mountain, and Isaac asks Abraham, Where is the lamb? We have the fire, we have the wood, where's the, where the lamb? And Abraham answers, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. God had already said, Through Isaac shall your seed be called. For that promise to be true, Isaac had to survive somehow. And so we have that word in Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac shall your seed be called. Abraham concluded, that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him 
in a figurative sense. When Isaac was on that altar, Abraham was resolved to obey God. And then Abraham saw that God had provided a lamb. Abraham rejoiced. Well, then the Jews answered Jesus, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus of Nazareth, how could you know Abraham's thoughts? How do you know Abraham even had any thoughts about you? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, verily, verily, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And here comes the detail we saw at the beginning. The name of God. The sacred name of God is Yahweh. Or uh, that's as close as we think. The name of God is really not pronounced in, in Scripture. We see it written as uh, Jehovah sometimes. That's just the vowels with, I mean, the consonants with other vowels put in. But Jesus treats God's name like it's his own name. Now, when you find false teachers, false prophets, who don't believe that Christ is divine. They don't like this verse at all. In the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, they don't translate it accurately. It is just what Jesus was accused of in John 5, 18. He makes himself equal with God. Yep, that's what's happening. Before Abraham was, I am. The one who will set all his people free. The one, when he sets them free, they're free indeed. He is the great I am. And the Jewish leaders are done discussing. They took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. We don't know exactly what means he did this, but he did it. His hour had not yet come. He left. But before he left, he revealed who he is. When we see the revelation of who he is, there can be only two responses. To oppose him and engineer his death, or to embrace, believe what he says about himself, and die to ourselves and live for him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a savior you've given to the world. Your only begotten Son, sharing your eternal nature. He who is not ashamed to call us members of his family through the grace he's made available to us. This week, may your people be bold to share his truth, that he is greater than Jacob, greater, greater than Abraham, greater than any problem that we surrender to him. Help us know him and help others know him as the great I am. In Jesus' name, amen. We come now to the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and having given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The service is now concluded. Go in peace.